Hello everyone. In this lecture, we will be discussing about a high vacuum pump that is ion pump. Okay. So, in an ion pump, it is also already a high vacuum pump of capture type that is the trap, uh, the gases will be trapped inside the pump itself. So, here we use sputtering the position for that capture. Okay. So, the instrumentation as you can see here, the main part of this uh, capture type pump or ion pump is a pending cell which is called a cylindrical uh, which is will be having a cylindrical anode unit made of stainless steel and titanium plates as cathode at the both open ends of the cylinder okay that are called anodes so uh, the stainless steel is cathode and the other one is anode sorry the stainless steel uh, cylinder is said to be the anode and the titanium plates will be acting as the cathode that is the case of diode setup and we have another triode setup also they will be have we will be having another grid okay that will be discussing later and next one is array that is we'll be using a large number of pending cells stacked together or array of large number of pending cells that is called array then next one is ferrite magnetic poles so as to control the charged ions within the volume of the pump okay so ferrite magnetic poles are required to control the uh, ions so this is the uh, principle or work uh, structure of an ion pump so the upper picture represents a single pending cell so as we said earlier there is a cylindrical anode at the middle and two titanium plates that is cathode at both and open ends of this anode so while applying a high potential the stray electrons inside this anode cell or pending cell will be moving very fast okay so within this magnetic field they will move spi in spiral paths and in th those motion they will be colliding with the gas atoms within the cell right so when an electron collides onto an atom the atom might get uh, excited and on the excitation it might lose some electrons so that it becomes an ion okay so this ion will be highly energetic and it will be moving towards the titanium cathode plates it may be hitting onto the cathode and there are many possibilities of reactions so when uh, it is fastly moving towards the cathode it, the ion might get captured inside the cathode or the ion might penetrate into the cathode that is called ion capture and also another uh, possibility is that these ions uh, can interact or uh, hit on the surface and uh, sputter some atoms were there that is the energy or energized ions move on to the surface and hit it on the surface and it will expel some titanium atoms from the titanium or cathode surface and these sputtered or expelled atoms will be highly energetic okay those atoms will be highly reactive so those atoms react with ions forming some stable compounds okay and the formed compounds might get deposited on the walls of the pending cell itself it might be on the cylinder itself or maybe on titanium cathode okay so thereby they are stabilized or the stable compounds are being deposited on the cathode it will not be creating any pressure or vapor pressure inside the vacuum chamber okay so that the gas atoms inside the chamber are being removed or captured so this is the basic working of an ion pump so as you can see here we are using a many a large number of such pending cells as an array so this is an array with ferrite magnetic poles at the top and bottom okay so these are the working statements again as you can see the stray electrons uh, in the anode moves in an oscillating spiral path in the magnetic field and collides with the gas molecules a few of them gets ionized so they are either buried inside the cathode or anywhere in the uh, pump after reflection 
and the impact causes removal of titanium atoms that is called sputtering so with uh, which gas deposited on the surface right so these reacts with the adsorbed gas and stable compounds are formed and these compounds will be getting deposited on the walls of the pump itself okay and thus the molecules are trapped so that is the working of a diode pump but the main disadvantage of a diode pump is that it will not be, uh, say furthermore sputtering might cause releasing of the sputtered gas or deposited stable compounds that means if another energized ion collides onto the same site where the uh, compound that has been deposited which might release the already deposited atoms outward which will be causing inefficiency or reduction in the efficiency of this ion pump so in order to remove that we will be using another triode setup so in triode setup say we will be having three electrodes that is that is uh, referred as triode okay so both cathode and anode are made in grids or mesh type of electrodes and a third electrode is added at the ends that is ion collector okay so in the diode setup we had only cylindrical anode and a cathode plate so both are having high surface area but in this structure cathode and anode are made very thin or are made very uh, grid like structures or mesh at the same time the collector is having very large surface area usually the ion collector is the pump body itself okay so the working is similar the anode produces uh, the stray electrons nearer to the anode produces ions that ions are being accelerated towards the cathode mesh and they graze onto the surface creating sputtering and form uh, the sputtered atoms are very reactive and they can react with the gas and form stable compounds so instead of the getting deposited onto the cathode these stable uh, compounds are getting deposited onto the collectors placed at both ends or into the pump housing or pump body okay so that is the difference in the uh, case of a triode pump so in the diode pump we had the deposition at the cathode itself or at the pump itself but in this case the deposition occurs onto the collector that is the pump body okay again the working range is 10 raised to minus 4 to 10 raised to minus 10 tau it is a very high vacuum pump and having many advantages that is self regulating that is the main feature of this ion pump that is uh, self regulating means it only expels the number of atoms which are proportional to the gas molecules or ions present in the chamber okay so no wastage of titanium cathode plates or cathode mesh is occurring only the required or minimum required amount of gas is being pumped out right so if lesser number of gas molecules are there there will be lesser sputtering occurring or so that lesser number of cathode atoms will be released if there is large uh, amount of gas present uh, the sputtering also occurs accordingly in large amount so that more number of atoms are being released so it happens only in proportional with the gas load that is coming into the pump so it is self regulating and high pumping speeds can be attained because of this sputtering effect and clean and silent no contamination because no external or foreign material is used here so there won't be any contamination and the design is very compact as you uh, saw earlier in the case of diode pump the pending cell is very very small one okay with a small cylinder in the middle and two plates at the top and here also we are using three mesh one for anode and two for the cathode on both side of anode we will be having cathode plates okay so this setup is very compact so that they can be placed inside the vacuum chamber itself but the only disadvantage is the periodic regeneration that means 
after a long term of use the ion collector surface will be having large number of atoms so they cannot accept more atoms onto the surface so this might reduce the efficiency so in order to prevent this we had to re uh, regenerate the surface okay by proper methods so this is the uh, as we said earlier this is the only disadvantage that we can find in the case of an ion pump it's a very uh, efficient pump high vacuum pump itself and I'm working at a capture type category so the major advantage is self regulating and high pumping speeds okay so next kind of one that is a classification of another classification of ion pump that is called getter ion pump so as you can see here the getter materials are referred as the substances pumping by chemical adsorption and surface reactions okay such materials are called getter materials so they capture the atoms or gas molecules either by adsorption of some or some uh, surface reactions so metal thin films can be used as a getter material usually titanium metal is used for this purpose okay so that that's why we are using titanium cathodes in ion pumps so uh, the previous case it was called sputter ion pumps but in this case we will call it as getter ion pump the workings are similar the gas is ionized by the electron cloud inside the anode and that are driven towards an auxiliary pump usually a sorption pump so that they are getting sorbed onto the getter so getter materials will adsorb the ions instead of getting sputtering they will be getting adsorbed onto the getter material okay so these ions will be captured by the getter so ad advantages are similar also self regulating clean and silent pumping no contamination so even uh, in the case of power failure the captured gases will not be released okay that is a one of the main advantage of this getter ion pump as well as sputter ion pump that is even though power is failure there won't be any re release of the already captured gas load but it has a uh, compact design and it has to be periodically regenerated thank you